This month's main test is a Freightliner Argosy, operated by Poonies Riordan and West. As tragic as it is, in 2020 we say goodbye to the Freightliner Argosy, an old friend and a loyal servant to many an operator. But 2020 is a good turn of the wheel away yet and there's plenty of reason to write the order for a truck that many we encounter to describe as a bloody good machine to me. There's no greater champion of the Argosy flag or the people who sell and support them than Dave West, Managing Director of Riordan and West Transport located in Purnie just west of Pukekohe. The distinctive blue and white Argosies have been a fantastic advertisement for the Freightliner, Trucks and Trailers and Riordan and West brands since the first one rolled out of the yard in 2000. Today the Argosy headcount in the R&W fleet stands at 11. The latest Argosy to grace the gateway is the Majestic No. 6 and it's certainly a step away from the company's traditional bulk machines with its sprawling Demet flat deck body and trailer affording 19 metres of load space. The truck's driven by Robbie Tomkin. He's been at R&W for four years, in fact he's in his fourth year of driving big trucks. He's exactly what this industry needs. He's steady, he's a thinker and he's polite. Number 6 has a 90 inch mid roof cab and runs the Detroit Diesel DD15 and Eaton 18 speed AMT. The DD15 produces 418 kilowatts, 560 horsepower and 2500 newton meters, 1850 pound foot of torque. AMTs are another thing for which the Riordan and West brand is a stronghold. Dave said they've given them no bother since installing the first one in a truck back in 2004. Loaded with steel, the DD15 made light work of the run south from Purnie to Wellington, grossing just under 50 tonne. The motor loves life down low and it has one of the sweetest bottom end notes of any engine. Behind the AMT are the perennial Meritor RT 46160 GP axles with different cross locks at 4.1 to 1 ratio. They sit on Freightliner airliner suspension. In this day and age, an Auckland to Wellington run is not even a full day's work. Earthquake Gully south of Waitahanui is a good test of any loaded southbound truck and it was dispatched in 11th gear at 1800 rpm and 32 kilometres an hour. Crossing the old Mangawekas once consumed an entire Slim Dusty album but now they're barely a song and a half long. The Argosy's interior has changed little over the years and we're well ahead of its time when new. It meets European ECER 29 crash test standards, a US field cab with a big low swept dash affording excellent visibility. It's a festival of gauges and switches and some of them are a bit of a reach to get to, but a bit of incidental movement never really mattered. The only area where it's arguably showing its age is a lack of a contemporary IMAX digital communications navigation interface and no smarts on the steering wheel. We don't entirely view the latter as a negative to be honest. It's a tragedy we're losing the Argosy in a couple of years. Freightliner is the US cab over brand. Freightliner should always have a premium cab over available. For Freightliner was founded on cab overs by a man who named his creation after what he was hell bent on doing moving freight, as much freight as possible. Glellan James would be spinning in his grave if we could see what's happened to long haul trucking in the US where once there was margin, now there's bonnets and chassis rails. The agony of the Argosy is made worse by the fact that when it comes to shifting freight, we're a cab over country. Had there been another 200 million of us, there's a chance that she just might have made it, maybe. Trucks and trailers have done an outstanding job of backing a product they believe into the core. That won't change one iota in the next two years. Their association with the brand is not just a commercial one. Freightliner is part of the Wright family story. And every single Freighty, up to and including that very last one, will be too. 
Make sure you get the August 18 issue of New Zealand Trucking Magazine for the full roundup.